Yeah, go recording. Ahead. Go ahead. This is a meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen, April 21st, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is Donald Davenport, Chair of the Hamden Board of Selectmen. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. John Flynn? Here. Uh, Mary Ellen Glover? Here. Pam Courtney? Uh, Robert Markle? Here. Okay. Uh, is the Ed Poulin on now yet, or is he? Is he going to be present when we do the? He will be here. Yes, he will be here. Um, and okay. Pam is also checking in at this point. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, this open meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of May 12, 2020, through the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of. COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmissions of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the town meeting law to have open meetings in publicly accessible physical locations. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to be entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded to the public and can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. I would ask everyone to stand or cover their hearts for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the, of United, the United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic. The public. Republic. For, for which, which it stands, stands. One, one nation, nation under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. It's much, it's much more coordinated at a, a meeting where we can all, all be there. Uh, I, the first item on the agenda is the meeting minutes of February 24th, the regular meeting. I didn't see any corrections, so if no one else sees corrections, I will make a motion to accept the regular and executive session meetings from February 24th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Donald. Aye, Mary Ellen. Aye, John. Okay. Uh, first I've just admitted on... Ed Poole into the meeting. Okay, the first item on the agenda is uh, adoption of the local option legislation. You want to give us a brief review, Bob, of that? Yeah, there are uh, three parts of recent legislation uh, that's been signed by the governor. One of them allows the suspension of penalties and interest. It allows suspension of penalties and interest on property taxes as well as other fees and charges, depending upon the decision of the selectmen. They can limit it to property taxes, but if they choose, they can also suspend penalties and interests from the day that the governor declared the emergency, which was March 10th until uh, June, uh, the end of June. Um, or they, so you have your choices, limit it to property taxes or extend it to all town fees and charges that are overdue and should otherwise incur a penalty. Uh, the second um, has to do with the date in which the fourth quarter property taxes are due. As you know, you can also delay that. And ordinarily those property taxes that last quarter bill uh, was sent on the 1st of April and property taxes are due on the 1st of May. You can also delay that. And those who applied for a personal exemption, for example, uh, widows of veterans, uh, that application was required to be submitted by April 1st. You can also extend that deadline if you choose. 
question. Bob, can we accomplish the same thing about the due date for the fourth quarter just by relieving the penalty and the interest for a month from that date? Yes. Thereby pretty much extending it to June 1st without extending the date. Correct. Negating the penalty. Yes. I have the motion that is approved by the legislature mm -hmm. in order to uh, uh, take action on all three items. The first motion is I move that uh, the, the deadline for the fourth quarter tax payment pursuant to section 10A of chapter 53 of the acts of 2020, the due date for the fourth quarter tax bill be extended from May 1st, 2020 uh, to a date in May or to June 1st. You're allowed to extend it one month. Uh, I can't make that motion because I'm not a member of the board, but that's, I think I sent you a copy of, of these motions. Yes, you did. Yeah. Ha have we talked so to our my, my My issue with that one is that the majority of our, I think I believe our real estate taxpayers pay their money into escrow so mm -hmm. the bank has the money and yes. so why would we let the bank not pay the money that they are holding for these people until june 1st first I, first I, off, also, do we have a do we have a feeling from the accountant the tax collector and the town treasurer that delaying collections for say a month is not going to affect our, our balance it will not i've talked with the town treasurer uh, the town is in a very good situation mm -hmm. regarding cash flow. Okay. So if you choose to extend the deadline uh, for whatever reason, it will not put the town in a difficult position as far as tax flow. Cash I wonder, flow. I wonder, further to Don's point, is that we already have all these things out there and printed with that date. Is it easier just to, again, skip the penalty for a month? which doesn't change the bills as they were printed. And that would be the other motion you had there, your second motion basically on uh, penalty and interest waiver. Yeah. Your third motion, I should say. Third motion, yeah. yeah. The interest waiver really um, results in the same outcome and allows the individual person to make a decision as to whether they will meet the first date you know, or do it late and still have no penalty for doing it late. So mm -hmm. I can't see any purpose in doing the first one. I certainly think that the interest and penalty one is, is well-founded. Okay, we now have 47 individuals who are observing the meeting. There were, there were times we didn't have a special town meeting with that many people. <laughs> we had a count, we had a count several times. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just say, and I don't, Don, how you feel? Uh, yeah, I, I would skip one and yes. really move three instead. I agree. I would agree penalty and you. interest waiver. Right, yeah. right. And then would we would we waive it on all of the things listed under there? Your decision. Which is motor vehicle excise, property tax, betterment assessment, or apportionment thereof added to a tax? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, on <clears throat> at the regional meeting. Last uh, Wednesday night, uh, I that question was asked of the various towns that were participating, and they're all over the map. Every town did it differently. Hmm. Well, we don't have it. We don't have any betterment or easement things, do we? Taxes? No, this is boilerplate, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, this is boilerplate. So, so would you be the first? The first two for us? Motor vehicle and property. Motor vehicle tax. and property tax. Yeah. Yes. Motion. Okay. So we're going to skip no motion on one and two and just make a motion on three. Well, yes. that's a good reveal to me. But do the motion well, on three first, and I want to talk about two. Yeah, I'm not sure what two uh, is. That basically the third quarter taxes. More appropriate with penalties on that previous ones. Stand deadline, sir. Yeah. Oh, the, the number two is the exemption, the personal exemption. Oh. For, for the app, for filing the application. Yes, that's all. 
the application deadline. Remember now with number three, the penalties and interest, mm -hmm. uh, you can extend it to, to the maximum of June 29th, not June 30th. Okay. Do I have a motion? Well, do we want to do June 29th on? Do you want to do it a month at a time? Or do you want to take both months? June, let's do, June, let's do, do June 29th. June 29th. I'm sorry. I'll make a motion that pursuant to Section 11 of Chapter 53 of the Act of 2020, interest and penalties shall be waived on late payments of motor vehicle excise tax, property tax with a due date on or after March 10th, 2020, where payment is made after its respective due date, not before June 29, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is it unanimous? Uh, okay. And then the second one is to extend the deadline for certain individuals to file for deferral because widows or disabilities, yes. hardship. Yeah. Yes. I see we're. 21 days past that date. Has, is it a problem at this point? Do we know? No. I, I don't believe it is. No, it isn't. I'm wondering, do we need to take I mean, it was uh, April 1st ex expiration. We're yeah. in the 21st now. Maybe it's a moot point. Yeah, you can go up to June 1. No, I'm saying maybe we don't even. Is this a problem? That, is Eva reporting this is a problem that people haven't been able to? No. File no. It is no. not a problem. I don't think it's a problem, and I don't think it will impact anyone. However, changing it to June 1st may, may make one person feel a little more comfortable, and it doesn't really cost us anything to do that. So, you know, I'm, I can go either way on this. Hmm. I think most, well, people that, that, most people that want this have already applied, I am sure. Or they need this, you know, but something could happen, and you never know, and that person would then have to come forward and would have to it be an exception. Maybe they weren't physically able to make it down because of the, the shutter. So the we're afraid yeah. to come, get, get out and whatever. All right, you wanna make that motion? Yes. Um, I move that pursuant to section 10A4 of chapter 53 of the acts of 2020, the due date in the third paragraph of general laws, chapter 59, section 59, referencing certain applications for exempt, exemptions be extended from April 1st, 2020 to June 1st, 2020. Second. All in favor? John. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving yep. on the agenda, A and R for the solar landfill project. You probably got the best history on this, John. Uh, basically, so originally, and all of us who have brought it up there are aware of how the configuration is up at the, the landfill, if you will, the former dump. Um, it was purchased in three lots going back to, we're going back to the 50s and 60s here. Um, we took action a couple of years ago to join the first two lots together to make it easier to go through permitting. And I'm sure, I don't know if Ted wants to chirp in, but I'm sure he doesn't. It's easier to deal with a permit application for a single lot rather than two separate lots together. You know, so we did one ANR joining. It should have been both. Us for a survey. Like I said, even though it's, it's, it's big acreage, you're looking at a 30 acre parcel or 40 acre parcel, is going to be approaching four or five thousand. <laughs> you, uh, John, so what do we do? We go to the file some kind of form with the planning board or something? Well, we do after we get the survey done. So basically, hire yeah. and um, Smith Associates is pretty much the preeminent survey guy around here, Ted. And you see most of your plans. Uh, Bob is also on, signed by them. Uh, they're located in East Long Meadow. They're familiar. They did the first uh, ANR. They would do the, the second. Solar right, farm now. Right, now. right now, it shouldn't be any problem doing social distancing oh, okay. the survey. They'd be probably a couple hundred yards apart. So, and then come back to us with the completed survey plan. We then would submit it to the planning board. We'd get the ANR, and then we could start submitting that to conservation. Letty, um, come on, baby. What are you doing down there? <laughs> I, oh. You're getting a great reaction. What did you say, John? <laughs> <laughs> Another, another. Do we country. need? Do, do, but, uh, so do we need a motion to hire? Do we need a motion to hire a surveyor? 
Yeah, and I would uh, maybe, you know, it's a good experience for Mark maybe to reach out to them and get that uh, thing done. So the, right. I'll make a motion to uh, authorize hiring Smith Associates to do an a &R of the landfill joining parcels 85, 86, and 87 to a single parcel ready for submission to town boards for permitting. Just for the the, the only point I, I might add is that maybe we should say Smith Associates or another firm if they are unavailable because then we don't have to come back again. If, if I don't know that they have, I don't know how much work they have. I don't know if they're, you know, if they're, if they're practicing right. or Firstly, whatever. You're right. But, authorize, authorize a survey to consolidate parcels 85, 86, and 87. Okay. Second. Is a second. Second. I'm sorry. Second. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. I don't see when, uh, Bob, when is the, uh, is the applicant there now for the fire department thing? I don't, I believe so. The chief told me that I think he's here. Ed, is that yeah. you? Yeah. Okay, he's here. Gary. And you said you were yes, bringing the applicant. Correct? Yes, I'm here. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I see you. Yep. Okay, great. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, thank you for coming tonight. I have a new applicant for the call fire department. Um, there's a um, need for obviously the call fire department member. Anyone in town wishes to apply, um, please do so. Applications online. There's my pitch. <laughs> um, Gary filled out an application a while ago. He did his physical, <clears throat> passed everything, and if, uh, the board wishes to appoint him tonight. He could be a member of the call fire department. Um, that is separate from the full-time members that we have. This is after 4 p.m. until 8 a.m. is what the call fire department answers. Mm -hmm. um, he he um, is a veteran well, currently works for AMR. He has his own business. He lives in town really close to the fire station. So I good candidate for us. The chief did pass along a resume, which I sent to the selection. Mary Ellen, John, um, you have any comments? I think uh, trust. I trust Chief Poulin's you know, due diligence in vetting any candidate coming in. I second his applicant his call for more people to join. So the um. For Hamden? I did it. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I gave him all the information. And then uh, the town administrator did it. Well, are, we, are we set? Um, I, I'm assuming they got information for you. Somebody's talking on my, on my, my machine. I don't know if there's other machines that are getting that. Um, I would be, I, I don't have a problem with the, this applicant, no, nor the call, no having a call firefighter money. added to the list. Um, but what I would the ask is if the, is the he did that the money is, part is if the um, fire chief could provide me with an overview of the fire department. How many? It seems like we have all these different categories that I am not yeah, particularly again, familiar with. Yeah, with the different responsibilities and the difference between the different yeah. the different titles they have. And I gave my whatever. Budget, so he so I'm wondering if sometime in the future. Um, we can get a, some kind of report on that. So we get an overview of how many people are really involved in the fire department and um, what their roles are. But for this, for this particular position, it seems perfectly appropriate and the man seems, um, Gary seems perfectly qualified. All right. Hi, Gary. You're on the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a motion for Appointment. I move to appoint Gary Lamote. Lam 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 is that how I say his name? Um, Lam Lamont. Lamont. Um, to the position as, as uh, call firefighter with the Hamden Fire Department. Effective immediately, I would guess. Uh, and is this subject to a probationary period? Yes. He, I think that's what it said, yeah. One, one year probationary. Um, in that time, if he can make it to the call academy. What? And complete that, then here. But generally, we like to build a person out, make sure their commitment is good, and that they show up at calls. 
before we move to the motion. Okay. So I'll second that motion is subject to qualifications as probationary fire to fire as listed by the chief. All in favor? Aye. John, aye. 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 What's the next thing on our agenda, Robert? Next item on the agenda is a review of the dispatch options and uh, potentially a vote. And then uh, underneath that, uh, if you do choose uh, to consolidate dispatch, be a notice to local 136. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have comments? We have 47 participants. <laughs> so what was the status of our last feedback from Wolverham? They were still investigating information from their different departments, dispatch, et cetera. They didn't meet this well, week because it was a holiday. Right. The communication that I received from um, the Wilbraham Town Administrator is that they uh, had a session last week with uh, the head of their dispatch department. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not make any decision and that they were asking the head of the dispatch operation for additional information. Mm -hmm. I did speak to him again this week mm -hmm. and there's been no subsequent activity. And that seemed to be the substance of the email we got from Chairman Bunnell of Wolverham as well. Right. right. Not the same. Any um, here, did anybody check with the state about uh, any possibility of that date changing? The May 4th date? I uh, I don't have any information. Maybe the maybe uh, Chief Farnsworth does. Chief, you're unmuted. Yeah, that May 4th is a pushback date. Uh, they are saying they're not going to move it again. They're actually even holding all their dates for certification. They're not going to move those either. So they're pretty firm on that. So, is there Mary Ellen? You have a, any? Do I have what? I missed you. I, I couldn't hear you. What'd you say, Doug? Uh, we you have. You have a comment? Well, I do have one person who wants to speak. Perhaps we should go ahead. Ask. It's Jim Smith. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Hi. Um, I, my first question was going to be the one that John just asked about the uh, deferral, but apparently that's uh, the, 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 you know, the push out of the May 4th date. Uh, but I just wanted to make two comments. Uh, as uh, most are aware, I've been kind of actively involved both on Facebook and talking to people on this issue. And it seems to be that there's a... I lost a, you. Oh, can you still hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems, that, seems that there's a... Uh, fairly large group of people that would like to see some sort of um, preferably town meeting option, but some sort of in-person meeting option to go over this and review it uh, thoroughly. Um, that, if that's not the case and that doesn't happen uh, and the, the board decides to go ahead with um, regionalization, the second thing that I uh, would like to put out there is there's a lot of people that think that Wolverham is a superior option. And I think we need to give it time to explore this more fully with Wolverine. Okay. I think I have another hand. Do you, do you want me to go through the uh, people who have hand raised? Hands sure. raised? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have a Tina Albano. Tina, you're on. Tina. Hi. Okay. I'm um, sorry. I was waiting for it to be unmuted. I agree with Jim. Um, I just think this is a big enough issue that, you know, Long Meadows spent a few months transitioning. Munson is about to transition. Long Meadows still is yet to transition, and they've been trying to do this since 2017. I would prefer to see it handled either in smaller groups. I haven't heard anything about the advisory board weighing in on this. And I just, I agree with Jim Smith wholeheartedly that something of this magnitude should we shouldn't try to involve as many stakeholders in town as possible thank you 
Okay, anybody else? Uh, I've not seen any at the moment. Claudia, Claudia and Chet. Claudia and Chet. There's so, we, so many people here. Uh, I got almost three pages worth. Um, okay, we have uh, Mr. Clavette. Uh, and where is he? Uh, you hear me? Yep. Yep. Yes. And we see you. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> there he is. I, I, you know, in, in going through, and I'm kind of like what Jim is saying, going through everything that was on Facebook and looking at the data sheet that you posted on there, Bob, an awful lot of people questioned a lot of the numbers. Uh, they questioned uh, the requirement that having two dispatchers that you've indicated in there. <clears throat> if in fact you do have to have two dispatchers, then that 300,000 needs to be put on top of the potential savings. So it could be a potential uh, decision that's looking at $1.8 million. Now, I'm not necessarily for or against it. And then there's also the discussion about the dark police station. Um, you know, myself, I've, I've lived in many towns where we didn't even have a police station. The closest one was an hour away. So to me, a dark police station is, is, is immaterial. But the question that came to my mind, if the dispatchers are helping the policemen, what exactly are they doing and why are the policemen not doing their own work? I, I don't know the details. So there's an awful lot of questions that were raised in the last two or three days going back and forth. And Jim can attest to that. that everybody feels there's a lot of unanswered questions. And I mean, to me, I'll take the $1.8 million, but uh, I tend to believe what some people are saying that $1.8 million is not right. And it may not be even as much as $300,000. So some of those numbers need to be firmed up or I think, I mean, you guys can certainly make a vote on it, but I think to make an intelligent vote, a lot of questions got to be answered. Thank you. Claudia had her hand up, Bob, before I did. Claudia had okay. her hand up before I did. Okay. Claudia. Hello. How are you? How are you everybody tonight? Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. Um, I have to be honest with you. Um, I really don't know which way I want this to go. Um, I see totally see both sides of what everybody is saying. Um, and I appreciate your opinion. Um, I just want to say if there is a vote taken tonight, I have confidence in the selectmen that we have elected um, to represent us that they will make the right decision, um, whichever way it goes. Um, I know not everyone's going to be happy, but that's just my opinion. I think I respect the three selectmen that we have. I think they're very educated and they've probably done a heck of a lot more work than we're even aware of uh, behind the scenes. So um, whatever it is, I think you're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Got anybody else there, Bob? Richard Mew says his hand raised. Okay, big news. Go ahead. Hey, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, my question is, have we talked uh, to any towns that have already done this regionalization thing uh, with their emergency callers? And if so, what kind of feedback did they give us? Thank you. With me, Leslie. <laughs> Bob, do you yeah. want to answer that? Yeah, I did. Um, I was asked by the selectmen to make a number of uh, calls. I called uh, several towns that were in regional dispatch centers in central Massachusetts. Uh, I also called uh, the town administrators in this area to see what their experience has been so far. Munson town administrator said that they're still in the process. They're expected to join up with Westcom uh, in June. Uh, East Long Meadow, 
will be joining up with Westcom July 1. So they have certainly limited experience in the operations. Uh, Longmeadow has been part of Westcom and the, uh, <clears throat> the town administrator reports that the fire department is very happy. He's happy. Um, the police department, uh, not particularly happy. Uh, and that's primarily because of the implications for the police station, you know, the whole business of having a dark station. And that was discussed by our selectmen as well. And I believe that's why the uh, Chief Farnsworth came up with a plan uh, to have a civilian uh, stay at the station uh, during those hours that you must have seen on the report uh, so that if anyone does come to the station in some kind of emergency, uh, there'd be someone there who would dispatch a car right away, which is what happens now. If you go into the station, you see a dispatcher and they basically, uh, policemen are out on patrol. They would dispatch a car back to the main station, take care of whatever issue uh, existed there. So, I know there's some questioning of the need for that. Uh, I know that uh, Chief Farnsworth came up with that plan uh, as a contingency plan, which might be adjusted going forward, depending upon experience. You want to say more on that, Chief? Where's the Chief? Uh, yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, we just set out those hours as a, as a framework that can be either increased or decreased uh, as desired by the town and by the selectmen if that's what they're chosen to do. So um, the thought was to have uh, a civilian present for uh, a significant amount of time where it would be you know, somewhat likely that somebody would be stopping into the station. Jim Smith has raised his hand again. Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify. I, I thought that there was a, an emergency room, some sort of a, a button that the uh, dispatcher or whoever is there, if it's a civilian uh, a clerk, could push to allow somebody to seek sanctuary within the station, uh, that they wouldn't necessarily just call for a, a car. Can, uh, can the chief clarify that? Yes, when we built the station, um, we set up that there is a, a, a safe room off to the side that can be uh, remotely activated to allow somebody to go in, um, you know, to be isolated for somebody else. It's a secure room that does not allow access to the entire station, just an area, um, you know, where they're, they can be monitored uh, while they're in there, but separated from another party. And uh, that can be, it's uh, remotely actuated, so that can be done um, from anywhere. <laughs> With regard to the numbers, if I could just follow up on a comment, uh, one of the one of the commenters said that they wondered if the numbers were accurate. Um, those numbers are as accurate as uh, I think humanly possible. Uh, in order to come up with those numbers, I not only uh, spent so, uh, a good deal of time talking with the director at Westcom. I talked with the director of the E911 office of the state about these numbers. I also went to the proposed contract to extract numbers. And while uh, there may be a variety of opinions, I feel very confident that those numbers which selectmen asked me to gather are very accurate and conservative. We have a couple of more uh, hands raised. Uh, there's Jim Smith again, and there's apparently another one here too. Hey, this is Jim. If I'm, am I in again? You yeah. are. Okay. Um, I think the numbers that were on the sheet were accurate. Uh, there were some uh, omissions that I I think were 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 um, not there. Um, there is going to be an unemployment cost for the yes. dispatchers, uh, and yes. I think that that could total up to about $90,000 as part of the startup, um, just the math I did. Uh, and there was no number in there for 
the negotiations with the uh, police officers for the change in working conditions. And I don't know the, you know, first of all, I, I realize you can't just, you can't put that number out because you haven't had the no negotiations and putting that number out prior to the negotiations would be a, a conflict. Uh, but um, there is a number there and I think it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a substantial number. Uh, not a hundred thousand dollars, but it's going to be a substantial number. And so it was just two, two what I thought were, you know, big omissions. And then I was uh, concerned with the fact that there was a strong implication that we, we had to spend that extra 300 and some thousand a year to have two dispatchers when that's really a, it's, it's, it's a point, but it's not, it's not urgent. It's not mandated. Thank you. I would agree with uh, two of the three. Uh, I did make an effort uh, to estimate the cost of unemployment insurance. Um, I did call the state office twice. Uh, frankly, there's no one there. Apparently they aren't considered, or at least no one, no one answered my call. I left my number. I wanted to try and work something out, uh, at least a rough estimate as to what it would be. It would depend upon whether or not the Hamden dispatchers were able to get new employment. Uh, one of the offers at Westcom would be to interview the Hamden dispatchers. Uh, in checking with Longmeadow, uh, their dispatchers were in fact hired at Westcom. As more towns join Westcom, they will be staffing up dispatchers. And so uh, even if I had been able to make a good uh, connection with the state office, I think it's very difficult to estimate um, just how much unemployment would have to be paid out. Uh, again, it would be contingent upon how many of those dispatchers would not uh, be given or be able to get uh, new employment. So. Someone else have their hand raised, Bob? I think we have another hand raised here from, uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Clevett. Okay. Was the um, two dispatchers uh, $300,000, is that a requirement or is that, because I looked and I know Jim looked and a few other people looked, we couldn't find that regulation anywhere. If that's a regulation that we are out of compliance right now, yeah. then we got to expend the 300000 regardless. I can let the chief answer that, but... Uh... There is no mandate. It is what we call reg what, what is called regulation emergency medical dispatch okay. requires two. Just based but, on what you had in the, in the report, Bob. That's all. Right. Yeah. Right. Th that would be the price uh, according to uh, data I got from the chief. Uh, if in fact the town wanted to become compliant with emergency medical dispatch. Well, that's the question that I'm asking. If we don't go to Chicopee and we stay on our own, we would have to spend that $900,000 or $300,000 to be compliant, correct? To be compliant, but it's not mandated at present. The, the way it works is there's, you're looking under the CMRs of, of what the state mandates. But however, the state only allows, there's only three companies that are certified by the state to do, to uh, have EMD, emergency medical dispatch. You have to contract with an approved company. Um, the preeminent company for that uh, is called Priority Dispatch. That's what we use. We also have to have, um, the process has to be supervised by a physician, by medical control. Ours is Dr. Beltran out of uh, Bay State. So you can you have to follow along with them. And part of the program requires what's, um, you have to do quality assurance. You have to do QA on all the calls and they have to be done the way that they're, um, you know, required to do by program and by medical control. Um, our dispatchers do a, do a good job with it, but if we, if we followed it to a T the way it's supposed to be done, uh, we would end up with a failing score. 
because you're not supposed to put somebody on hold. You're not supposed to pause. You're, you're, you're supposed to go uh, continue on giving pre-arrival instructions. But the fact of the matter is, is we, it'd be irresponsible for us to fail our dispatchers because there is no way for them to dispatch an ambulance and get people rolling and not delay uh, the call or put somebody on hold. So it, it's kind of a convoluted thing that, um, you know, right now it's kind of a, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, look the other way on. Um, but Sergeant Cooney that does our, uh, <clears throat> our quality insurance, uh, you know, on a monthly basis um, is fairly lenient with that as required. Um, so, um, you know, we are doing it but we are not doing it the way that it was designed or, or should be done. Um, okay. <clears throat> I don't see any other hands up, uh, Mr. Chairman. Well, let, well me, let me tell you, let me tell you where, what I, where my position is. I, I strongly believe that consolidating dispatch is not only an efficient and responsible approach to providing quality emergency dispatch service at a reasonable cost for the town. I also believe it's the future. I believe that if we don't act soon to consolidate uh, dispatch operations, we're gonna eventually be in an untenable position because we'll be paying wages, insurance, benefits, pensions, may have to add people, and the town at some point isn't going to be afforded, be able to afford it, especially when we're one of the lowest, if not the lowest, uh, 911 dispatches in the, in, the, in the state. I also believe we have an obligation to Westcom to make a decision, and to Wilbraham to make a decision, because they have to do their paperwork and they're only a week away and, and Wilbraham has to make a decision whether they want to continue on it. I'm very cognizant of the concerns expressed by some of the people, uh, some of them legitimate, some not, some of them factual, some not, some comments on Facebook. Uh, I bit my tongue and didn't respond and other comments. I bit my tongue in response because I agreed to them because I want this to kind of stay out of the discussion. Uh, I'm concerned that there's been a lot of misinformation, uh, non-information about the whole process, the pros and the cons, uh, about Westcom and, and consolidation in general. And that concern, concern to me extends to how do we let the majority of the people of the town know what this is all about, why we need to do this, what's our, what's our position in that, particularly in this time when, you know, we can barely conduct meetings ourselves uh, because of the, the COVID virus thing. So if I could propose a resolution. And may, I I make a may, may, may I make a comment before you do your resolution? Yeah, yeah. I've spent a long time thinking about this and I've reflected on the topic of regional dispatch and several theme, themes emerged that are important for our discussion. First, let me be clear. There is no one at this meeting or in this town that is more strongly against regionalization than me. I've been burned by regionalization and the state's promises in the past and I've spent the last three years fighting to remedy the injustice Hamden has suffered. Despite my strong feelings and these experiences, Regionalizing dispatch service is ultimately the right decision. Second, I'm a realist. I recognize that tax receipts in Massachusetts will drop, uh, will see a drop of millions, if not billions of dollars, which will reduce monies available for towns and there is no turnaround in sight. I recognize that the unemployment rate in the state is rapidly rising with a projected rate of 25% by June. I recognize that our present financial crisis is very real we simply cannot and should not bury our heads in the sand. Since the state will undoubtedly be significantly reducing its aid to local towns, it is imperative that we prepare, that we cut costs where we can and develop our rainy day fund precisely because it is raining. Third, I'm aware that it is more comfortable to keep dispatch in town. Yet I also know that we must live within our means. Like every family, as a town, we must conserve where possible. 
would we rather have ambulance service or a ditch dispatch center located in town? Would you rather we maintain a contract with our trash hauler or contract with a new transporter at a lower fee? Would you rather enter into an agreement with a community in which we have equal vote with the other members as it will be in Westcom or join with one other town in which you have no vote as with the proposal being floated by Wilbraham? We can't afford it all, so we have to make tough decisions. Those decisions only become difficult if you value feelings over facts, emotion over sound judgment. I'm sure that some may not agree with my decision today, but that does not make it flawed or unreasonable. It does not make it wrong. I encourage residents to read the information in Mr. Markle's data sheet, which is posted on the town website, and consider things with an open mind. It's not what you want, but what you need and what you can afford. Therefore, since Hamden has the second lowest dispatch call volume in the state, since the police chief, the head of the dispatchers union, and everyone who looks at the situation with clear eyes agrees that regionalization is inevitable. Since best practices for the highest quality of emergency medical dispatch service requires two dispatchers per shift, and we only have one, since incentive monies are available for the next five years, as long as we join Westcon by May 1st, since this decision is rightfully one of the responsibilities of this board, since this topic has been discussed for many years and has been on every board of selectmen agenda since October, and since most importantly, Hamden would have far more control with Westcom than other, under any memorandum of understanding, I move that Hamden submit its intention to join Westcom for its dispatch services. One more hand up, by the way, Don, at some point. I have a motion on the floor. Have a that, was, that, was, that was a little inappropriate to have that motion when the member Don needed to speak. I didn't have a chance to speak, and I think making that motion was a little inappropriate. You could have a motion, and it'll open the discussion. If somebody will second it. Don, you had something to share, I think. Excuse me. I thought you had something to share. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You had something to share, or oh, something before. No. Well, I was, I was gonna. My, my thought was that the, that we would, uh, uh, the board would take a vote. Uh, whether we all agreed to uh, endorse the concept of consolidation and recognize that we need to do this. Uh, and then pursue the available options and avenues over the course of the next few months to bring to a special town meeting so that we can then uh, apply for the next grant round when we decide who we, who we want to go to and all the information can be out there for everybody. So I would like to, so I want the board, I want to, I want to get a, I want to get a sense of the board, whether the board as a group is for uh, consolidation. Has what? One thing. What did you say, John? You cut out on my. Go ahead, John. One thing I haven't heard, and I think somebody raised this point before, maybe it was Jim, walking away. Let me just get this. If we go ahead and endorse the May 1st thing and then find a better deal with Wolverham, or we want to come back and reflect for a year and then join when they go to a larger facility, do we have that option? Or by signing this thing on May 1st, we're locked in and can't go anywhere else? I know there was a question I thought, Jim, you might have asked it, or Bob was looking into it or something like that. Secondly, my thought is we've had this, like Mary Ellen said, we've been talking about this for several years with different options. We have an option to, an opportunity to save some money, but that number seems to be dropping as we can continue to modify it, do different things. We don't know where the budget is at this point. We need to work with our different departments to figure out what we can do for the coming year. And we need to bring them in for that discussion. But right now, it's so up in the air. And again, we have the question of how do we inform people on this whole topic? Is there a better way to do it? As Don said, do we move and then look for an opportunity in the future to bring everybody into a discussion? I don't know if that's a workable thing. It's a great thought. But I don't no, know no, I'm make not, it work if I'm we've already sure. locked. John, no, what I'm saying is that we, we, Excuse me. Well, what I'm saying is that not that we vote to join Westcom tonight, that we vote to 
you know, consolidation is in our future. So therefore we need to put all the ducks in order for a special town meeting in the fall so we can present all our options. Whether it's joining Westcom later on, joining Wilbraham, or creating a whole new region with Palmer and somebody else. I think that's I would, a good thought. More time I, to investigate the potential savings, the potential expenses, which yes. is really something like Dad said. It seems like every time you pull on a string, there's another dollar that needs to be spent. I have to commend the chief. He's been working on this for several years. And he's looking out for the best interest of the town because we know this is coming down the pike from the state. But not everything the state does is right for the town of Hampton. So we have to make sure it's right for us. I think a little more exploration, Don, is a good point. I have a question. Have, what? Did you say something? Uh, my question would be, does this proposal include the go-ahead to apply for a grant? I think we're up against that, still up against that May 4th deadline. No. I have to. No, it does not. No. My, my, my concern is I have been going to Board of Selectmen meetings for years. And the diff most difficult task that I have found that they have is making decisions. I don't know why, as you turn every corner, there will not be some other topic that will come up, some other option that will present itself. We don't ever know what is the perfect. But if you wait for the perfect, you do nothing. And I think that it is important that we take a stand, that we have the courage of our convictions. We, I personally know this is in our best interest because I looked at all the facts. We have been discussing this in on, the on the present board since October. Mm -hmm. We've been, we had discussions in 2012, this was discussed, for dispatch regionalization. I don't see the purpose of waiting. I really don't. And I think that the public has elected us to take positions on difficult issues. If every difficult issue that came before us, we brought to the town meeting, what are we here for? Just to decide minor little things like the cupola or something? It's not minor, but you know, I can't think of something minor. But it, it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. I think that, that my, ocean, my motion was in order, and I think we should submit a, 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 our intention to join Westcom at this point in time. We need a motion, we need a vote now. I'll second it for the purpose of discussion and voting. What are you, what are you oh. seconding? You're, what are you, you seconding? Motion. Your motion. Oh, that motion here. I didn't see which, I didn't see the first part. Some, I think cuts in and out sometimes. I miss half of what people say, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Don, uh, another comment uh, in discussions with town council. The arrangement with Westcom would be a so-called intermunicipal agreement. Those are under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen, not the town meeting. That's exactly uh, several right. Several years ago, several years ago, apparently there was a discussion at town meeting and a non-binding vote. The reason why it was non-binding is that IMAs, intermunicipal agreements, uh, which are used throughout the Commonwealth, are the uh, under the purview of the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing I would point out is that going to going to a town meeting allows everyone to state their opinion, um, and and I think that that's a healthy thing, and that's why we had the forums before because it's 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 good to have dialogue and and other uh, and bring other opinions to the table. But we have looked at all this for so long that I think we've heard the opinions. But the but Bob in, a, in an intermunicipal agreement, if a person if we go to, if a if a town goes to town meeting with with a you know a contract like this and someone in you know we and someone stands up and says I make a motion and we put $500,000 back for the dispatchers and the town votes that, then what do you do? Well, uh, a contract like this would always have a clause contingent upon funding so that if the selectmen decide to do an intermunicipal agreement, the proper role of the town meeting would be to decide on funding. If they were to decide against the funding, then the intermunicipal inter agreement would be voided. Right. Right. 
But and it might be it might be unusual that the town meeting would vote to put the four hundred thousand back in the budget when um, we've already we've already given them the, the ambulance that we're going to be expending three hundred thirty three for. So I mean, you can't take, you can't take one item in isolation. You have to take it in 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 relationship to the whole budget as a whole. So. Uh, we have a motion on the floor and uh, we should vote on it. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you want, I just want to say again that I, I think that uh, you make very good points, Mary Ellen, and, but I also, I also think that uh, we, we need, I, I just feel that there's not enough information out there for everyone to accept that this is a thing. Although I do believe that we need to consolidate. And my proposal would be that we vote to support consolidation and then spend the next few months in getting the, all the information, all the numbers done and all that work done uh, and then make a decision whether to join Westcom for the next in April, next April thing, or some other option that may that will come up. Well, I guess the other point would be. And I don't if, believe. It, I guess the decision I want to make is, the, I guess the decision I want to make first is that we all agree that we want to consolidate that we're going to consolidate dispatch. The next the decision would be who are we going to consolidate dispatch with. I don't want to separate those two, number one. And number two, I think that if your concern is that the public doesn't have enough information or has or doesn't have the facts accurately or whatever, we can always pass it and then go on a campaign to inform the public. I am more than willing to do that campaign, to put that information out there, to answer any question any person wants, to do any research that has to be done that we feel hasn't been done thoroughly enough, although I doubt there's any, but there may be, and I'd be happy to do that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get information out through the, through the Selectman's newsletter. I believe in sharing information, but I don't think you do it at the cost of your own conscience to make a decision that is most appropriate. And I don't know, I don't know how much you can investigate something. I mean, you can investigate something forever, I suppose, but I don't think that's productive. We I had a couple of hands said, up, but now they're not. Okay. I think it's Don said a couple of options here, if I can share. A, we have an option for Wolverham. B, we have an option for the new Westcon building. And to be honest, this is brand new. We've talked to Long Meadow, who have had some, what do we want to say, hiccups at the beginning. East Long Meadow and Munson haven't really tried it. <laughs> if it's Don said, if we wait till next year, let them iron out their problems. Then if we go in, and also, if you go back to the Long Meadow thing, their agreement made them give the uh, dispatchers a job there. Why didn't we get the same option? Why like, oh, they'll get an interview, but we probably won't get them. Why don't you want ours? They're the most knowledgeable about Hamden. That should be part of any deal we make with them. And if they go to a bigger facility, they're gonna need our people, if that's the way we go. If we don't merge up with Wolverham as an option. I think we have some opportunities here and to investigate how good it is and secondly, really find out where the money is. Let Jeff, let Jeff come back to us for the for details. To present Wilbraham as a real, to present Wilbraham, to present Wilbraham as, good. To present Wilbraham as a realistic option is not accurate. When the idea was brought up to Wilbraham to do this, their police chief said, what's in it for us? They're the ones that need us. I don't see where we're going to improve by joining, by having them join us. Mr. Ballyard said he didn't see the benefits for Wilbraham. Robert Russell would expect, express skepticism and said, I want to know what the downside is. It is, it, uh, Mr. Brawl in, said that uh, he was, he, he that, that they would, they would allow us to join them, but they would charge us. I mean, I don't think that's even a realistic thing to be even entertaining. We want a partnership with somebody. We want to vote with somebody. We don't want to be the victims or the minority. We've, had, we've gone that route. It doesn't work. And I'm interested, and I'm interested 
and finding out what East Longmeadow and Munson's experience is going to be with Wesco. They, you know, they haven't gone in there yet, and, and that's I think that's an experience that we could learn something from if they're in there for three or four months. I'm all for consolidation. I think we have to consolidate. We're going to consolidate at some point because we're going to be required to. But I just, I think right now there's not enough public information to people, for people to understand the whole thing. I think there's a lot of negative information out there that most of it is correct. And uh, I think we need to take, to vote for agreeing to consolidate and putting it before the town meeting in September or uh, November. That's my position. I'm 100% for consolidation. I believe it's you can't have a foot in both camps. You can't. You you cannot have a foot in both camps. You can't say, "Oh, I support consolidation," but but let's not do it now, and let's find more information, and let's bring it to the town. That's not being for it. That's being that's trying to have your one foot in both sides of the issue. No, no, it's right. a reasonable, it's a reasonable approach. It's a reasonable approach to something that we have. We we are we are new at we 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 come up to a deadline on May fourth. We could vote mm -hmm. to go with Westcom or not, right? Or we can say, look at, we need to consolidate. We understand that. Uh, we need to make sure that the person we consolidate with or the building we consolidate with is functional and operating the way we expect it to happen, uh, and you know get that information out there. You know. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have no information from East Long Meadow because they haven't joined. We have no information from, from Munson because they haven't joined. Uh, you know, and I don't think it's, and, and we're not going to be, if, if we did it tomorrow, we probably wouldn't be in there until sometime in the summer or later. Anyhow, we have a, we do know that we'll have unemployment costs and things. So the savings, probably the first year isn't going to be that great. So, you know, as opposed to your, your, your thought that it's in two camps, I think the reasonable approach to resolving something that we need to get done and, and we can still do it on a timely basis. And here's the hands up. As, as you said, Don, also, you know, they already told us they're going to a new building with more communities involved. Let's let the other people iron out the problems first. They're going to need communities for the next one if that works out if that's right for our people and we know what the money is. We're not saying no forever. We're saying no, we're not buying the 2020 car. We might buy the 2021 car. That's what and I do, see. We're and not do saying we, no. It's the and do, we, in us. and do we really think that the state's gonna come through with this kind of a deal in the future when the economy is so terrible and where the, when, the, when their tax receipts are so down do we really think that next year they're going to say, well, okay, guys, we'll give you the good deal we were going to give you last year. I don't think they will. That deal is, that deal is predicated on funding on an annual basis. No, it is not. So who No, it is not. It's in a dedicated fund. It does not have to be appropriated. I looked into that when you said it last time, and they said no. Fund that replenished every year based on income from yearly things. So... Yes, that money, you're not saying, that money isn't $8 million sitting out there that they spend out on a yearly basis. It's like the CPA fund. They get funding in from title transfers. I believe, Jeff, this comes in from cell phone calls or something like that. Cell phones on landline. Yeah. Right. Phone, all telephone. So it's, it's, it's going to be. It's it's on an annual basis. Excuse me, so, John, for interrupting. If, if it's, if a, those it's a dollar. Down, right. It's a it's a dollar fifty on each phone now, up into twenty twenty four, and after that it goes down right. to a dollar. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So it's not money in the bank now. It's the same money that's there next year. The same money that's there the year after. But again, and I'm surprised that you know who's to say the legislature doesn't cap it for something else because oh my gosh, something is a little more urgent. You know, the Esplanade needs paving. Anyhow, Mr. Martin, I'm looking. Hmm? What? No, there, there's a couple of hands up. Yeah, go ahead. You can pick them. 
Okay. Tina Albano. Tina. Tina. All right, next one. I think um, anemic. What's her name? Tina still has her hand up. Go ahead. Pick some. Move along. Let me just check one more. I, I guess you guys have answered all their questions because the, hand, the hands have gone down. No more hands up. Yeah. All right. So we have a we have a motion on the floor. <coughs> here for the vote. The, the motion is to submit the intent right, to, to join Westcom for dispatch services. Is that the motion, or it's your motion? Yeah. yeah. That's the no. motion. Motion. Could, could you repeat it, please? That Hamden submit its intention to join Westcom for its dispatch services. All right. And All I in second favor? It. Yeah, John, you second it. I second for the purpose of discussion. Correct. Okay. A vote. All in favor? Aye. John? No. I thought you were going to call all opposed. Oh, okay. All opposed? What is he doing? Okay, I, I'm opposed. All right. So, and uh, Donald opposed. It's unbelievable. All right. So, I'd like to propose, I, the chair is often that the chair proposes a motion, but I'd like, I'd like to propose a motion uh, that the board endorse the concept of We'll move forward the concept of consolidation and we'll pursue the available uh, options to bring to a town meeting in November or whatever the town meeting is. I would say the that annual, motion is out of order. The annual special town meeting. The motion is out of order, Mr. Chairman. Why? Because the chairman cannot make a motion. Fine. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that the board endorse uh, regionalization for dispatch if it's appropriate for the town and to bring such action to a special town meeting in the fall oh my God. if the board so feels it proper. Any second? I'll second it. Uh, vote? Any the further discussion? discussion? I think it ties the board's hands, and I think it's inappropriate. And I think that the, the board is listening to a minority of the of the populace, not to the majority. Why do you think it ties the, the board's hands? Because it's made a commitment for us. It said what we're going to do. We're going to go to a special to a town meeting with a proposal. And we motion, and I don't and the and, motion and, of the board. We can take that motion back at any further meeting if we have more information. Then why would you make it? <laughs> I, mean, well, I would make it. You don't make a motion with the idea that you're going to withdraw it later. I, I, I suggest that because, as I said before, we need to step back. I believe step back, get some some significant information from how it works for these other towns when they get in there. We need to provide information out to the town, which people aren't apparently getting because of the uh, the uh, the COVID virus, and also you yourself said that the, you know only a small minority is is getting it. And I'm very concerned that come town meeting in June, we won't we won't even have a town meeting. We may be one twelfing this for who knows how long. So I think this is a this is a <laughs> A, a legitimate and reasonable proposal to say to people, we're going to consolidate, we're going to get this done, and we're going to give you a strong proposal with all the financials and all the things come the next town meeting. Well, then shame and on us. To, then... And, and by, by the way, we owe it to Westcom also, because those people have been very kind and generous and have answered all our questions and they need to 
move along to it. Well, shame on us if we've taken six months and we don't have the answers to those questions is all I can say, because that's how long it's been on our agenda, for six months. And well, I don't know what, have, and, I don't know, have, and I don't know what another month and a half or whatever it's going to be to the June meeting is going to do that will all of a sudden clarify everything for us. But I'm a minority, so you people can take the vote. I'll, and we'll I'll just tell go you what forward. it's going to do. It's, it's going to give us information for months in East Long Meadow. It's going to not, give us information. Not significant, not significant. They're not joining to June and July. So it's not yeah, significant so they information. And then by October, they've got three months of, they got three months of-, of I raise my hand. Here with us. Okay, I'll, I, will, I, will, I will let the issue drop. <laughs> we have a phone, we have a hand raised also. Is it a hand or a finger? <laughs> it looks like a hand. <laughs> Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> okay, all right. And it says iPhone, so I don't know who it is. It's uh, Paul McNaughton. <clears throat> it's what? It's Paul McNaughton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, ju I'm just curious on, on why um, the possibility of Wilbraham and waiting longer is such a problem with Marianne. It seems like she interrupts and she has her own agenda. She gets angry and she's acting like that everyone else doesn't have the right ideas. And I believe that we all need to sit back, once again, take a deep breath. This is a very trying time for all of us, every community in, in the United States. And we do have other options. And I really haven't spoke much, I've been listening, but the constant interruption from Marianne, um, I think is disrespectful to the rest of the board um, and to our town. I'm not particularly happy. Um, I know she's been having problems with the re regionalization of Minichaw in the, in the middle school and the whole nine yard. I get it. But it seems like there's an underlying issue. There. So I'm just saying that I 100% agree with Don and with John that we do need to wait. We need to look into the matters at hand with East Long Meadow, with other towns. And it's, that's a realistic possibility. And I know Wolverham, you know, many people don't like the, what happened with that regionalization of the schools. I was one of them, but I'm also understanding other sides of it now. So I get both sides, but I know for a fact that we do need to wait and we do need to get more information money-wise um, and everything else. So no disrespect, Mary. Marianne, but um, I think you're just acting a little um, angry for some reason, and the other board members have a, have a good say, and they're making very good points. Um, it seems like you, know, you, wrote, you wrote your entire speech to tell us all that this is the right thing. I disagree. So One more hand up, Don. That being okay, said, go ahead. No disrespect. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Gary. Person. Hi guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's Tina Albano. I just want to thank everybody. I know being a selectman and serving the town can be thankless. And Mary Ellen, I appreciate your passion. I just think in this time where communications are difficult and people are losing their jobs and focus has shifted, it's hard to get communications out there. So I appreciate, I appreciate your point of view, Mr. Davenport, that, you know, we're going to allow this little time to breathe. I realize this has been something that's been on the plate for a couple of years. I guess the only question I have is, if everybody's being forced to regionalize, wouldn't Wilbraham ultimately be forced to partner with somebody? I would, I, well, it's a hard question to answer. I, I would suspect, but, you know. Uh, it's just another unanswered question, I guess. I, like, I would just yeah. think that they would be forced to partner with somebody or they're going to be forced to go to Westcom. So, like, maybe if we get something going, I don't know. And I'm not against Westcom. I'm just, I'm just I don't want to do something in haste and then have it come back against the town. But I do appreciate everybody passionately advocating and um, 
again, I just think, I think I, I, I agree, Mr. Davenport, that I think going forward, we can flush this out in a couple of months and I think we'll have a better opportunity to kind of explain it to the town what's gonna happen. And I think the better informed they are, the better they'll be willing to accept changes that will become for, forthcoming. Yeah. Don, if I can make a point, I think I think what we have here between Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen's point about the motion versus, I think we're looking for, we're taking a position of the board, we're in favor of re regionalization, exploring it further, and we're gonna make it a priority and work on this and bring it to the fall town meeting. Is this can, some can you, substance of what you were saying? Can, can, you, can you repeat that sound? It's breaking up a little bit. Basically, some in substance of what you're saying, the board will continue to make it a priority. We don't see the Westcom option of May 1st in our best interest at this point. However, we're cognizant of the fact that we need to explore regionalization going forward, and that's going to be our priority. Some in substance, basically. Right, and, re and, and regionalization is coming. Right. Regionalization so is coming. Whether it's, but we're not, let's not tie our hands. It's Westcon, maybe Wolverham works out, maybe Wolverham for a couple of years, and then all of a sudden we've all merged into a larger puddle. But we've learned more. Like you said, we've learned from the other people's experiences. My father used to say, don't go out and till the ground first. Let the other guy break it up. It's easier to do the work. All right. We so, need a, so we need a, we need a vote on your motion, John. What is the motion again, please? Oh, it's really a motion. Let's just take a position on our board. We agree that regionalization is in our future and we're making a priority going forward. I don't know if we need a motion. Uh, I, I, want, I, want to make, I want to make it a motion that the, that the, your motion that the board endorses the concept of consolidation and that we'll pursue it and have bring something to the town meeting in November. October, November. When, at the, at the, November, uh, whatever it is. Fall. Special time. Ball time. Yes. Annual, annual like, like, special time meeting. It might be the annual town meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, good. In the fall. All right. So, so it, I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. What did he say? Was it unanimous? I think yeah. it was. Unanimous? Yeah. I heard an aye after a pause. Yeah. Like, who was that? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Thank could, you could, very could, much, everyone. If if next, just before next before, item on the agenda. Before Paul McNaughton, what, McNaughton, whatever his name is, leaves, I would point out to him that the the use of Zoom causes us to uh, step on other people in talking uh, because they <laughs> it, it cuts out cuts in and out. That's number one. And my mm -hmm. second point to him is. I will absolutely admit that I am passionate. I am not angry, but I am passionate about everything that I believe in. That's it. Okay. Which brings us to your selectman's manual. Uh, policy manual. Okay, I got the. Um, I received. I, I received John's corrections um, the last for the last meeting, and I've gotten them from uh, Mr. Markle. So I will incorporate oh. them. I haven't done much on it this week. Um, but I will try to get it to you as soon as possible. I'm thinking that what I would do is I'd have three, I'd have each of us have a hard copy, and then I would put it online if that's agreeable to everybody, but we can decide that at a later date so that people can access it as we update it and we won't have the problem with pay pagination and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like um, the, um, the suggestions are all good, and, but, we should, but the pro one of the problems is, and one of the delays may be, that some of them need discussion. And whether that's appropriate in the Zoom format or whether we should wait until we get we get together as a as a board again is something we can think about yeah. going forward. Yeah, that's it. For right. Oh, the other thing I would mention is um, I just wanted to ask John: yeah. Do we are we do, are we doing the, um, the the scribe thing, the selectman's page? Is that going forward or uh, not going forward? Or? Well, I think that's something to discuss. I hadn't heard back from. I forwarded it to Don for his comments. Because yeah. typically when Nancy was doing the newsletter before, kind of all three selectmen endorsed the newsletter. And I was worried that actually he hadn't had a chance to see it and offer his comments. Because it does represent the three of us. Yeah. Right. And I did have a problem with that paragraph, and I really think that's something we should discuss. All so right. I'll take I a look at it. Not I'll take the, 
Yeah, they're not doing the scribe till next week, I believe. And I don't know if Becky's okay. online, but I think. Okay, so we do have some time. I'll, okay, so John, I'll, John I'll you'll just get it back it to him, and I'm out of the loop right now. Okay, is that good? Okay. John will get it back yep. to John, but, and then he'll go forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, budget review. Hmm. First off, I I have to say, Bob, putting the uh, all the documents up in the OneDrive is excellent. Really, uh, having the laptop up here and looking at them saves on paper. I know we have a thousand dead trees, but this will help us quite a bit and keep it more up to date. I wanted to make one point. I know that um, Mary Ellen, you've made a point that you know we need to look hard at next year's budget, but I don't think we can do that in a vacuum. We need to bring in the other departments. We haven't notified any other department that this is something we're looking at. And we can't just cavalry cut their budgets. We need to bring them in and say, hey, uh, I'll throw some names out. Joe, Bob, <laughs> Sally, what can you do? Where can you cut back a bit? But it's gotta be a cooperative thing. We work with these departments. Well, maybe a memo from Bob or the chair to other departments. We anticipate next year, as you said, I've talked to Eric, Revenues we know are going to be down statewide. We may need to tighten our belt, but it's their budgets. Where can they see an opportunity to stay and bring that conversation to us? And then again, with the advisory, because they're in charge of some budgets that don't come through us. But really, this I is do a, have a meeting with department heads tomorrow. I can convey yeah, that's any staff, information. That's staff, not necessarily department heads yeah. per se. Yeah. So, yeah. so I do think it's yeah. something, I think a memo. That maybe even Don, you might want to consider just a separate meeting just for that type of thing. The, well, the that's, advisory, that's excuse me, the advisory committee would like us to meet with them on May 11th. Mm -hmm. Zoom, Zoom meeting, okay? And uh, Mary, Ellen has, Mary Ellen has proposed that, just that kind of budget meeting. Maybe we should make a special meeting for that or just make one meeting before, you know, like like to, like to do that. Before. I think I think we should, I think we should have a special budget meeting, and we should call people in. And I agree with John that they, we have to look at the whole. Everybody has to look at the whole thing. We're one big budget, and 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 we have to look at it in greater depth than we than I think we've done so far. But we haven't put that message out yet. Again, we have this reported, but we no. haven't uh, sent an email to this department, at that department, at that department. We need a unified message that we're all working together. So yes, maybe. Where so, can you so, so maybe we send out a message that says for, the, for every department to look at their their fiscal budget their and lists and uh, areas where cuts can be made and we will be meeting with you on this date at this time and just go through with all the departments if that makes sense you know before the 11th so that we're going into the 11th with concrete information and um you know we know where we stand um so bring, we, we have to have, bring some structure we have to bring some structure to it i guess is what i'm saying can we can we do that on May 4th? I would think May 4th would be good because you need these, some of right. these apartments right. maybe don't meet that, and so they need maybe a week and a half to really okay. look hard at their budget. Right. And All the right. other thing they could look at, I think, is the, the present budget. What has this crisis, where has have savings been, been affected, if there have been any? You know, because mm. you couldn't this mm. or you couldn't that, yeah. so you really have a little pool of money that, that, you, that you can bring to the table. So they should look at their present budget and their future budget, I think. You know, Mary Ellen, I, I was thinking about, you know, even with the regional school district. Oh, yes, uh, please. I, you know, I, I was just wondering, if, we, if we're paying for transportation, we're not transporting the kids. Now, I, know, I don't know if they've laid off their bus drivers, but, you know, mm. generally in contracts, if there's some kind of disruption like this, the contract is... Null and void, you don't have to pay. So I'm wondering, are we saving any money on transportation? Are we I saving think, any money because I, there's, I, no, I, there's no support program? I in the message to uh, the school, to Howie. Last week, yeah, didn't Don, you ask him? To, I, yeah. I, called, I, mean, I, I did. called Howie. Oh. No, he didn't get any response. Okay. Did you call I him? I did Mark? the same. Yeah. And, and I think there, was a lot, there are a lot of places for savings in that budget. I mean, they're not heating it. They're not putting lights on as much as they were. They, they've got the, they're not keeping up the fields. They don't have the cafeteria workers because they don't have as many custodians. They don't have as much cleaning because there's not as many kids. The busing, there is a lot of money that is, and we just should well, know where that money is, I guess. But I think you go back to it's not, there's collective bargaining and there's things in the country. We don't know what is there. So really, who's to give us the answer? 
Howie Barber. Howie he Barber. Sees. Howie Barber. I understand. So we need to hear that back. Back to yeah. the back to the budgets we control. I don't think we need to set a number for them. I think we just need to say, look, we need to meet with you at the table. What can we do? One department might save one percent. One department might be able to save ten percent. Who's the they throwing out there? We take the paving thing and put it on the special town meeting warrant in the fall out of free cash. So we're not a pro. Who's to say? These are all things that are open. But we need right. the department heads because they're, they're most aware of what goes on. We need, it's cooperative. So I don't think we need to like set a number four them. we just need to say, look, we need you to come to the table and this is what we need to do. The, the advisory committee, while we're on the budget, the advisory committee sent a bunch of questions, which we answered, and they sent some more today. Uh, and I just want to go, if you can go quick through them. Uh, they want to know uh, the unemployment insurance, are there former employees currently receiving unemployment compensation? There are two. I like, I like Don, your question before, were those appropriate? I thought somebody was going to look at yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll, I'll follow up on that. They also, they, they wanted to know if we would be willing to segregate or the expenses associated with the town administrator from the general expense of the board of selectmen. That that figure now, there are general expenses we put in for twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and there's mm -hmm. other question we really need that much. And secondly of all, it, it, a portion of that set aside for the town administrator for conferences and cell phone and stuff like that, and they kind of want to create a town administrator line item with expenses underneath it. So I don't know if we can underneath. do it. So basically we have the salary line up now, but now an expense line. Expense up line up, yeah, right. It makes a, I mean, a lot of that before was startup, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And we don't need the startup. Like you said, the cell plan is out, but there is still a laptop there. Right. You know, so. And then. Bob, I'm not sure. Do you use your personal laptop or the town one? I use my personal laptop when I'm, like now, um, right. when I'm not in the office. I use my own cell phone. Um, and then and then the town laptop stays at the office all the, the town time. Laptop, the town laptop is basically my desktop. It stays there. Um, all right. But I so, think as Don said, that was a one-time charge. So it was in the budget, but it wouldn't be back in this year because you bought it. No. Right. We're not giving uh, you a new other, one here right now. Other than a couple hundred dollars to go to the annual MMA conference, uh, I don't know that there have been any expenses since I've been here. The other question, the other question I asked about the town administrator was that we have the hundred thousand dollars for the budget, and they were wondering why we kept that in if he's still part time, and what's the rationale for carrying full time salary in the budget if they're going to have a part time position. And the well, rationale we now well, of is Bob can work fifteen hundred hours. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> And was uh, I would just say this, if you decide at some point to go into the market for a full-time administrator, mm -hmm. the money is there. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that um, I don't uh, take any benefits so that there is mm -hmm. a payment for retirement uh, and there's a payment for health insurance that I don't take that also represents savings in the town budget but I, there again, if you decide to go into the market and hire someone full time, you'll need that. Mm -hmm. So it might not be a good idea to remove those from the from the budget. So, okay, all right. And it's a cushion. It's a cushion. It's money at the end of the year that you know becomes free cash if nothing else. And then they had a, they had a question about the our, our uh, office equipment line item, the supply. Mm -hmm. We request 10,000 for supplies, and they were wondering over the past couple of years, we've only spent 7,500 if we could lower it to that. I see Jane, I see Jane shaking her head no, so I'm guessing the answer is no. <laughs> okay. And the, and the last one is in the stormwater account, it's 40, mm -hmm. they have $41,000 remaining. And we, or the Stormwater Committee, put in for 45000 And there's, there's 41000 remaining. So I sent the note over to Gary Weiner 
to ask him if you know tie and bond consulting services and all that stuff. I don't know what kind of work they have to do yet. So I asked him to kind of answer that one. And I also want to know what articles do we anticipate on the warrant, which will be required to have appropriations. Mm -hmm. I don't think we really had any other than the, the truck, right? I don't think are, are the standard, I want to say boilerplate, the thousand for conservation. Yeah. Uh, there might be, I think I heard from the assessors, there might be a need for a couple extra bucks with the, the normal um, stabilization transfers they do. Yeah. You know, that type of thing where they go in and out. And we might be putting a little more in than we take out this time. But at most, that's usually the differential is maybe $5,000. Something yeah. like that. So in terms of big expenditures, Don, you're right. The only question would be, are we looking for something extra for trees this year? Or do we want to wait for the fall? Yeah, I think, that, I think they wanted to put that into a separate uh, warrant article, too. Like we yeah, did that's what I'm saying. That's a warrant article. Or, yeah. And then our discussion, as you said, about the, the traffic thing certainly warrants a discussion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the last thing, Bob, is they were asking about the... Uh, the uh, uh, Assessors, the uh, uh, Carol, you know Carol Reed's. Yes. Uh, uh, if we if we supported that uh, that increase, I responded to that. Oh, you did. Okay. Uh, prior to the weekend, and I responded again today. All right. And and one other thing uh, you had asked in connection with not only the dispatch operation, but you had asked uh, about uh, the tax rate and what. Uh, uh, amount of spending represents uh, a penny on the tax rate. Well, I know that I had sent you this, but for the benefit of the public, every time that the town spends $100,000, it represents $43 on the average house. And $100,000 represents 16 cents on the tax rate. Right. Whether you save it or spend it, it's about 16 cents and it's $43 per hundred thousand uh, on, on your, uh, your average house. The average house in town is valued at $270,000. I was thinking that that would be something that um, we, we could include in the, news, in the, in the um, Selectman's newsletter, because I think that when it's presented at town meeting, it's usually presented as the, as the tax rate. And, and, it's not, and it's, all of it's, it's not presented in all its iterations. So yeah. they don't say, they don't get to the 43 per, hundred, per, per household. Right kind of thing. I think that would be helpful for, for the public to understand how that process works. Right. So I will try I think, you know, the last time you, yeah, I no. heard some a resident saying, what does this mean on my tax rate? Right. So those, those are the answers. That's what they think. And, the, and then when you say 16, 16 cents, they go, well, that's mm -hmm. not bad. <laughs> you know, but it really, it really isn't 16 cents. It's, it's on the know, tax like rate. Yeah. On the tax rate. Yeah. On the, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we're so we'll have the meeting. So we'll, May fourth, we'll do just budget. Okay. All right. Oh, the other thing, Bob uh, Heath, we got to get Heath Joseph too because he wants to talk about the Memorial Day parade. So if you can on the fourth or at your next meeting at the end of the month. Okay, Quinn. Okay. Town, anything else on the budget? Town administrators report. Okay. Um, I'm going to advertise for a conservation agent. Uh, this has been very frustrating, but uh, we really just can't give up on it. We have to keep trying. I wasn't able to uh, find anyone in the region uh, at the regional meeting. After the regional meeting, I had asked around. Frankly, there are no towns in this area where they have a conservation agent who was looking for additional hours. Uh, among, well, the things that I've been doing, I worked on the data sheet uh, for the dispatch issue this week. Uh, I have requested contracts from McNamara Hauling and from Action Ambulance for implementation on, on uh, July 1. I know that we had discussed what we have and, and in both cases, we have proposals, but we don't have actual contracts. I'll be working with town council to do standard contracts for those two uh, vendors. Uh, both out of state candidates for fire chief have withdrawn. Uh, I was 
going to suggest that we do a session on May 4th, but it sounds like that agenda is filling up. <laughs> um, when would the board like to begin the process of reviewing resumes for fire chief? Well, if we have three, let's do it next week. Are we doing, we're not going to do all four? It was a four. Yeah. Somebody's four. over There's now. Four. Four. There were six. Yeah. There were six, four. right? Um, do, how, do we, how, do next do, week. how do we how do we review the resumes? Do we do it in a in a meeting? Do, does it have to be a posted meeting, or can it just be can a review of resumes just be, or of uh, documentations to just be a working meeting? Um, do we know that? I, I, I think um, we we need a standard set of questions, which I have. Uh, we would review the resumes on our own, and I would think that. Uh, uh, if you wanted to do two sessions, one where you discuss resumes and eliminate a candidate or two, or, and then secondly, then you, re, you would interview finalists. Mm -hmm. uh, given that we have four, you may want to interview all four. So, is that your preference to, to mm -hmm. look at resumes and make decisions, make a decision next week on how many to interview? Yes. That makes sense. Okay. So we'd look at them individually. And yes. And then just get our, yeah. get our feedback to you, which you could consolidate, right. and then, yeah. then we can make our decisions. Does that make and sense? And I'll set up interviews. Yeah. Um, hey, um, I want to Don, point out the various uh, yeah. municipal boards and Sorry, committees. Bob, Bob yeah. one thing before you go. Don, I know you had mentioned um, the parade thing, and I know you asked Heath to be on the agenda, but it wasn't there. I know he's hanging. He's in the meeting. Can we touch on the uh, Oh, is he, parade? is he? No? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, and he was, he was supposed to be on the agenda. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Heath, are you there? Bob, you... Can you put him oh, on? Okay. I have a hand over here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. on. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, there you are. Okay, we see <laughs> you. We hear you. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, the 25th of May is obviously it's Memorial Day and we do our parade. Um, with the uh, COVID-19 epidemic, I'm not exactly sure it's going to happen. Um, it's leaning based on... Um, what's been happening in the state with the closing of school until September. Um, most likely we will not be having that parade. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk with some of the other uh, post commanders of the state between now and two weeks prior to find out what their plan is as far as a Memorial Day parade slash celebration. But as is right now, um, I still want it to happen. And I'm working on making it happen. It doesn't look like it's going to. Uh, Heath, do you think um, we should move it to a different date, Flag Day, uh, 4th of July, which would interfere with East Plum Meadow? or have a bigger celebration in Veterans Day? What, one of the thoughts I had was that maybe we could have a welcome back Labor Day celebration. So we're welcoming the kids back to school. We're, we're honoring all the people that have worked and not worked and do some kind of a celebration like that. Any questions? Anything? I mean, I, I really I want it to happen. I really do. Um, 
but if we're uh, if we're still in a shutdown, then I'm, I'm not may I'm not gonna have that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay. Well, maybe we have to get together. You know, like maybe Mr. Marco could get could reach out to him and have a discussion about different options and yeah. how how we could support him. So that because yeah. this this system isn't working very well for for dialogue. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound good, Bob? Sure. Okay. Uh, a couple more items, but uh, I was going to bring up uh, COVID nineteen issues. I see Jane is here, and uh, <laughs> let me unmute her because I know she has fresh information. You're on, Jane. Hi, everyone. Um, we just got one more report. So we're up to 13 cases for the town of Hamden, which isn't bad, but I just remind everyone, please, please, please. And that might be fine for the town to do. That's not me. Uh, <laughs> but on the VFW standpoint, that's Did muted. You, uh, we do the Memorial Day parade. It's muted. Um, okay. And so, so okay. far as so, welcome back to school. Okay. Yeah. So we have 13 cases in the town of Hamden, which, because everybody else is reporting, we are now reporting. On, so I'll try and come up with a week and tell you, give you an update. We have 13 cases, but, and we're doing great as a town. Um, I'm really proud to report we only have 13 cases, but remember, stay isolated, you know, quarantine yourself, your hands, follow all the requirements, keep up uh, mentally, be okay. And you can always call for to help on there. I respond on, I don't know what else to say. My heart breaks for everyone, good or bad. Mm. Questions? Thank you. Claudia has a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jane. Um, and, you, and you may not be able to reveal this, but um, of the 13 cases, are there any from the nursing home in town? All I can tell you is that 13 cases from the town uh, oh. that live in the town of Hamden. I can't oh. tell you what they do, who they are, where they live, but all I can say is please pray for those families. I know I'm probably not supposed to say that on the website, but... You know what? Let's uh, be good neighbors. Hear about thirteen people in the town that are suffering, yeah. and one of them is doing great. And you know, really happy to hear that. So, yeah, all I can say is please keep in mind thirteen people that have this horrible, horrible disease, and uh, but only thirteen. So Hamden has a lot to be proud of, and. Just keep on doing what we're doing. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. That's a Claudia, nice question. Claudia, the, uh, the State Department of Public Health has a list of all the nursing homes and hospitals in the cases that those. They published it today. Yes, they Thank you, Don. OK, I just have a couple of more items here. Uh, uh, I am pleased. I'm sure the selectmen are also pleased that our town boards and committees, uh, as well as our departments, are functioning almost normally. Uh, there are video conferencing meetings going on. The advisory committee is using video conferencing, park and rec. Uh, I'm meeting with the department heads tomorrow and the staff. The emergency management team meets on video conferencing. And the library board, as well as the book club, uh, are meeting uh, over uh, the uh, Zoom network. So, uh, they had two meetings on Saturday. So, uh, 
Uh, I was uh, uh, asked, I wanted to ask you when to schedule a presentation about a proposed TIP project, the Transportation Improvement Plan to improve safety at the intersection of uh, Allen, East Longmeadow, Summers Road, and Wilbraham Road. Uh, I was going to propose the fourth, but that seems like it's going to be a busy night. Uh, the 11th, we're meeting with the advisory committee. Oh, it looks like uh, the 18th. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, I guess that's it. Uh, I did list some dates at the bottom uh, of some meetings coming up. Uh, otherwise, that concludes. Thank you. Anything else to go before the board? A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Aye. everybody, for attending. Thank Have you. a safe drive home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay.